Hey Rat Bags, I'm back today with the 10 worst Steam survival games that you can play. Or maybe not, as half of them have actually been delisted. Yay! But there are still some cash grabs out there, so I'm going to warn you about them today. And basically, some of the missed potential. I've gone through basically over 150 of my own survival games. I looked at the worst reviewed ones with the worst percentage score. I looked up a few other websites and took a look at the actual Steam store itself. So, if there is a survival game not on this list and you think it should be here, absolutely let me know in the comment section. Warn your fellow survivors not to buy any jank. So obviously opinion based, do I have a little bit of analytical data to back some of them up? I'm actually doing it from the worst to the maybe the best. Let's go, 10 survival games to avoid. From the developer minds of Assassin's Creed directors, supposedly, and someone that maybe writ some of Dishonored? I'm not too sure about some of these claims, but that's what was behind Rock H, a survival game that launched way back in 2017. And it didn't stick around long. There was already a huge amount of negativity only a year later. Even looking at this trailer, it looks pretty bland and lifeless, but in 2017, there wasn't a huge amount of space games. No Man's Sky had come and burned and crash landed. And so there was a little bit of an inkling in trying to get a space survival game that actually worked and was actually maybe fun to play. So maybe Rock H could fulfill that need. It definitely had that simulation aspect, and that's what a lot of space games tend to rely on, that simulation effect rather than survival. But there's no doubt about it, Rock H just couldn't actually provide any of the gripping gameplay that so many survival fans want. Had a bit of a voxel kind of build system, so evoking Minecraft or Space Engineers. It definitely offered some creativity, and it was based on a real, almost lifelike version of Mars, apparently taking NASA data to kind of meld all the mountains and sand dunes and more. But looking back on this now, five years later, it does look absolutely boring as hell, with apparently the menu systems being janky. I've got it somehow sitting in my library, so I must have picked up at some point, or maybe it could have even given me a key. But yeah, seemingly, it seems like Mars survival games, they don't always do that well. There's been so many games trying to capitalise on the mystery surrounding Mars, but none have really lived up to it. At least with this one, the devs had good sense to actually take it off sale. They could have been promised with this one, they could have maybe made this into like a space engineers, but obviously set on Mars. But no, it wasn't to be. From looking at it now, it just seems too sedate, not enough activity or action going on, and maybe not got any of the kind of modern automation stuff that so many of these types of games actually do well in now. Rock H has gone round the dark side of the sun. This next one somehow managed to get a console launch and it was just as janky and poor on them platforms as well. Looking more like an Xbox 360 game rather than taking or utilising the current technology, Open Country really was not that great. It kind of still works though, there were some bugs or problems or issues when it launched, but the developers actually ended up abandoning the game literally only a couple months after. It seemed it just didn't do the sales required, and 505, the publishers, I guess, shut it down. Hunting simulator games are pretty big, you've got Call of the Wild and much more things like that where you're hunting, but maybe doesn't rely too much on the actual survival mechanics. So I was kind of looking forward to Open Country, I thought it could manage that gap between simulation and hunting games and survival. The ability to have a doggo, use an ATV and even have your own Breaking Bad camper van to run around the wilderness in sounded pretty cool. But you don't get to access a lot of that stuff straight away, you have to really grind through some monotonous boring missions before you get anywhere close to having the actual ATV. So yeah, forget the clips of this, it will take way too much grind to even get there. On consoles the game did suffer some real progression blocking bugs, which didn't get fixed for months, and then that was one of the last updates the game ever received. Not enough sales generated, and that meant the devs had to stop working on it completely. There's more hunting simulation games on the horizon next year, but are any of them ever going to be able to really meld proper survival mechanics to it? Let's hope so one day. Another one that I was trying to get behind because I felt like it could offer something a bit fresh, an artistic take on alien planet life, being able to have PvP and PvE, an MMO style survival game. Population Zero was meant to be you surviving on Kepler and pretty much looking around for decent resources, fighting off aliens and turning in lots of quests to NPCs. The art style, as I said, was a bit more unique. Some might say a bit more crap, but I would still say unique but the game was a dismal, dismal launch. Having multiple issues and problems with players being able to do the basics, like actually just connect and actually play with each other, 
It launched in May 2020, and by July 2020, a few months later, it received its last ever update so far. People weren't also happy that a special pre-order version of the game that you could buy off of Steam ended up being more expensive than the one that you could buy on Steam. Some reward for players trying to help you get your game off the ground. In the end, the game devs ended up going bankrupt, the servers were completely shut down, so it's not even something I think you can play in single player or offline. Some of the big, big negatives about it were the fact that even though it was an MMO style game, you couldn't actually join up with your friends. It seemed to be luck based. Trying to add people or group up was pretty much nil and void. The crafting was quite cumbersome and overcomplicated with the menu system and maybe just a little bit too much hand holding and restricting you to certain zones. And a lot of the servers would wipe, that was a core feature of the game, that your progress would pretty much be gone, but you would carry over certain aspects like experience or certain upgrades to the next version of the world. But given it is meant to be a PvP game, that shouldn't have been such a big deal breaker. Literally three months after launch, the population literally was zero who were playing this game, and the devs have now sunsetted the game about a year later, took it off the actual Steam store. Never has a game been named so aptly. Problem with making a video like this, it can feel like I'm punching down, especially on certain games that are made by really small teams. And that is something I never want to do. My hat's off to anyone that can get something resembling even any type of game to actually sell a few copies, because you've got more skill than I'll ever have. But we do live in a world where you'll be judged by your output, regardless of how early and how much focus you can put into that project once it's up and running in early access. Pantropy had a great idea and concept, but no one bought into it. You were surviving on an alien planet, but had much more realistic graphics, a decent build system, they were promising PvP and PvE components, but the killer key thing for me was being able to play and mess around with things like mech suits, spaceships, huge turret guns, as well as the common garden PvP that you might find, or gathering resources. It was going to take the next level of games like Rust and DayZ to a futuristic sci-fi setting where you could go and destroy other players' bases in these Star Wars walker inspired contraptions it was kind of buggy not the worst game ever but it didn't receive too much promotion and it was just way too rough around the edges seemingly with not enough creatures or enemies around the world to make it interesting enough especially when you didn't run into enough players it had some core components like the base building i thought was pretty solid if again as always a bit fiddly to use and really not that fun to mess around with but the idea of building your own mech suits and putting different additions on still gets me today and i kind of wish they had the chance to really go with it the game had a ton of pre-alphas and betas and stuff before it eventually going on sale but it just didn't receive enough sales to keep development going and i thought it was dead then but then all of a sudden, like a year and a half later, the developer announced that he was going to work on it again. He was going to try and get some updates done for it. They had to go back to their regular jobs because they simply couldn't afford to work on the game full time. So there was a little bit of hope and I commend the developer for doing that. But it did eventually end in tears once more. A year later, after a couple of updates where he tried his best, he did eventually say, nope, I will not be developing it any further. But this is why I really feel sorry for developers like this, because they didn't do the scummy thing and just leave it up. They did remove it from Steam. So you can no longer buy a Pantropy. Another dead game, Pantropy will be one consigned to the history books of videos like this. What do you do when the game you funded sells 35 million copies? You try and make as many clones as possible. And that's what snail games have seemingly been trying to do for years now since the success of Art Survival Evolved. Atlas was not the first attempt, believe it or not, but there were so many in this list, you'd wonder if snail games could ever make something decent again. Let's be honest though, Atlas was originally a ARC mod. It had a ton of ARC code in it. I'll come back to something similar like that later on in the video. And it was found you even saw the ARC menu if you fiddled about the control pad when it launched. It seemingly had potential. ARC, but at the open seas, pirates fighting each other, exploring a huge connected world. No more loading screens, no servers that you'd have to travel through obelisks, simply sail in one direction and you could come across a whole fleet of other clans, other tribes and whatnot. But it was absolutely dismal. The launch should never have gone ahead without some proper actual testing. The infrastructure with the online servers and stuff just really wasn't up to stretch. And they tried to kind of just push through it, claiming the hype of ARC and its history and stuff 
their subsidiary Grape Shot Games could push through. It got roasted and ripped apart by streamers. They paid thousands to actually promote the game. And in the end, Atlas was the butt of all jokes with meme after meme video. I even got in on the act and did my own parody. So is Atlas still a terrible game? The answer is kinda. After nearly a year of active development, suddenly everything dried up. Turns out they moved a lot of the team to go and work on one of the ARC DLCs. They lost their lead creator that had only just been signed on for the last couple months and it took another six to nine months or so to get Atlas back up in shape to start pushing out regular updates. Since then, to their credit, they have been updating the game regularly. They've been doing roadmaps, all the things you want to see from a game in development, pushing new content, making the grind less and basically making it something a bit more akin to a proper MMO rather than a grind for a survival game. But it just doesn't seem to catch on. Everything they're doing, no one's really paying much attention or taking much interest in it. It might take the full release and maybe a new platform like PlayStation for it to really experience some sort of new growth. Receiving absolutely dismal scores, it has improved over that time, but it's still only sitting literally on a 46% positive review score after all that time. But it has actually hit 55% positive review score in the last 30 days. Can they turn it around? Can Atlas become a decent game? I would say out of all the games on this list, you never know. And since they've been having regular constant updates and development actually going into it, it does look like what Grapeshot slash Wildcard really don't want this to be on their record as something so, so bad. I still wouldn't buy it, not to full release. And then, only then, when you see about five of your favourite streamers or creators actually say, yeah, it's a decent game. They're more and more trying to lean away from Ark, mostly, although they keep still adding some weird creatures that you can tame. And the PvP and combat elements just really aren't up to scratch. There's not a lot of great questing in the game either, and there's still substantial bugs, let alone just on PC, but obviously on Xbox as well. I don't think this game will ever be able to recover from its terrible start, but you know what? Out of all of the games here, it has had the most recent regular content and actual work going into it. So if there's any game I can hope turn it around, it might be Atlas, because I was pretty hyped for this, the idea of a pirate survival game. Couple double bubble for you now. We're gonna start off with Vikings and then move on to Cowboys. This is Valna Rock. Launching way back in 2017, Valna Rock was meant to be a survival RPG game. This was meant to be the ultimate Viking survival experience. And it was janky as hell. I mean, it didn't look that great even back then. It kind of reminded me a little bit if I was being generous as something like Chivalry, but with really janky survival mechanics inside it. It is still available to buy right now, but it hasn't actually been updated since 2021. It's nearly 18 months ago. Rushed with kind of ugly art, not even something that you could say was an artistic choice in my opinion. It just really didn't capture anyone's imagination. Another byproduct of the craze and rush to replicate Ark, Rust and DayZ. Another one you should absolutely avoid, the servers are dead or offline. Doesn't seem to be a single player for you to experience either. In the two years between its early access launch and its full release, supposedly in 2019, it really didn't receive that many updates. If this game was a Viking warrior, it certainly wouldn't be dining in Valhalla. Valna Rocks should be called Valna Sucks. Another survival Viking game, Room 2 had a huge amount of problems, even before it launched. The game was developed by Human Head Studios. These are the guys that apparently you think made the first Prey game. And this was the sequel to a cult classic, gonna be Viking, more RPG focused with light survival elements. They're going live and exclusive on the Epic Game Store, but the day before the game launched, the whole team suddenly quit the studio, only to all suddenly start going to work for Bethesda a couple weeks later as Roundhouse Studios. Some sort of argument with their publisher led to them quitting and basically not supporting the game once it launched. This left the publisher scrabbling around. It took around nine months to get another team together to do some quality of life fixes and add some improvements. And a year later, they added the decapitated edition and I think launching on Steam as well. I'm sure this has got like the voice of Mark Hamill in it as well. So it had a ton of money behind it, but seemingly stuff behind the scenes just wasn't right for the developers to leave. 
It's not the most focused on survival, and I contemplate you to even putting it in this list, but it does have them elements to it. It even states though on its Steam page that this is not your typical survival game, and don't buy it if you expect in certain aspects. So it is on sale still right now, it's janky as hell, but if you do like a bit of RPG and a little bit of Viking Norse mythology, and you really have done everything you can in Valheim, then you might want to pick this up next time you see it going for a couple of dollars. Heads certainly rolled when they tried launching Room 2. Off the back maybe of Red Dead Redemption 2 hype and the excitement and anticipation, there was a slew of survival games that tried setting themselves in the Wild West. One of them, thank God, has been delisted now, while the other is still on sale somehow. So let's go over that first one. New Frontier is a cowboy western survival game. Build your own homestead. And I think I gave this a bit of a shot and it wasn't the worst thing I played. The building was pretty intuitive. It had vaguely simple systems to use. It definitely was a free to play game though with grind really attached to get a lot of materials and decorations. Maybe we should have all been warned from the start because it might not have took our money but it certainly might have taken your time. This actually started out life as something called Wild West Online. That game also failed, they got bought out by these new publishers who revamped the game, made it from a paid game to a free to play game and that's how we ended up with New Frontier. Game hasn't had an update in over two and a half years and it has now recently been delisted. I guess with the advent of Red Dead Redemption, why would you bother putting time into this? Even if it is free to play, it just doesn't hold a candle to the simulation aspects and of course the story and the greatness from Rockstar. So what game could possibly do that? Certainly not Heat, another cowboy western survival game. This one from the original makers of Rain and Ruin, another failed survival game set in the medieval ages. Like honestly, I'm not dunking on people for trying to make a game, it's super hard and trying to work out exactly what people want using maybe limited skills sometimes or just not having the funding is incredibly challenging and I think today we're all a little bit overly harsh. That said, some games don't help themselves when they launch at stupidly high prices create traders or set up expectations that are just way too over and above what they can achieve. And you can tell from this trailer, this is exactly what was going on here. Let alone that later on you find you can ride a bear, yeah, in the Wild West game. Hmm. Again, probably suffering from the success of Red Dead, but this just looked janky even from this huge trailer that showcases so many different aspects. Apparently you could even have your own children, you'd be defending your homestead from bandits, and there was proper PvP in it as well. This one hasn't had an update in a year and a bit and it's still on sale right now. So avoid, avoid, avoid. Current reviews are 15% positive and still only 50% positive overall. So another one that Snail Games try to basically replicate art success with. How about Ark? But this time fantasy based. Dragons, dwarves, elves. Trolls and yeah, man, it didn't really take off that much. It kind of had a big, big launch. A lot of players got behind it, a lot of people give it a shot, and again, they found old code related to Ark where you could literally use the same spawning commands and it would spawn in similar creatures that would just be reskinned. Way too obvious from Snail. Is that the world's worst thing since you've got such a good base? If you kept on updating the game, maybe we could have actually seen the results. But it hasn't actually had a gameplay update since 2019, and that was minimal at best. They tried revamping it with this brand new free expansion, and they got some streamers or paid some streamers to play it again. But it just never did take off. Cool premise for sure. Fantasy, a little bit of steampunk elements to it as well. It sounds like it'd be a great mix. But it was janky as hell, there was a lot of bugs and issues, there was a lot of problems with setting up your bases correctly without getting wiped. Reportedly from my sources, the team behind it were simply given a little bit of money and told to make it exactly like Art Survival Evolved by Snail Games. And they did their best, but when things started going a bit wrong or they needed more investment or support, Snail Games basically cut them loose. And so then it was maintained by just a skeleton crew, way beyond what it should have. Like I said, it still hasn't been taken off of sale delisted and it hasn't had an update in three years. I think it's time for someone to put the light out for Dark and Light. So there we go. Like I said, you might find a lot of other survival games ranked lower in terms of pure stats. But overall, how big were they? How much of an impact could they have had? And were they actually developed by people that should have been able to do better? 
In terms of games like Pantropy, there really is a case for just some small developers needing a bit more support and maybe just had a bit of bad luck on their sides from making something into a half decent game. And some of these other games like Open Country weren't exactly the world's worst, it just wasn't that great and it just didn't set the world alight. But as you saw, more tales of cash grabs and so many games delisted. You've got to be careful about what you invest, not your money really, it's about the time. I've certainly become a bit more picky and choosy about what I actually play and cover on my channel, so hopefully you guys will do more research and avoid some really, really trash fire games out there. This is a bonus one, Fear the Knights, avoid it like the plague, another Snail Games one. And now I'm going to go off and make a video showcasing some great early access titles you should get behind.